Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumant Singh, and our top story, in spite of getting blows from various fronts, Attorney General Claude Walker announced yet another action on Thursday in what he called an effort to protect Virgin Islanders. The Attorney General's office is suing two global automotive companies for selling products that's now threatening the lives of VI motorists. News 2's April Knight has more. Thousands of motorists in the territory could be driving around with ticking time bombs for airbags. That's why the Attorney General is suing car maker Honda and airbag manufacturer Takata. For manufacturing, selling, and using airbags that they knew to be unsafe. More than 100 Takata airbags have already exploded violently in the states, causing 10 deaths. In the Virgin Islands, some 7,000 cars have Takata airbags, according to the AG. The problem began when Takata started using ammonium nitrate to inflate its airbags. Despite its dangerous properties, Takata began manufacturing and selling airbags with ammonium nitrate propellant. Even though Takata's own testing showed that it was unpredictable and subject to failures. While lawsuits have already been filed against Takata, the Virgin Islands is only the second state or territory to file on behalf of its people. The state of Hawaii was only one day ahead. What makes this more urgent for VI motorists is a recent federal study indicating that Takata airbag problems develop faster in areas with high humidity and high temperatures, making the Virgin Islands a high priority recall zone for the airbags. You can check if your car is affected by the recall by going to www.safercar.gov. What should you do if your car is on the list? Go to your nearest dealer. Doesn't matter whether you bought the car here or not, or whether you bought it for another individual. That car may be subject to recall. Do not delay in having your airbag replaced. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Again, that website is www.safercar.gov. If you have any problems getting your car dealer to replace the airbags, please contact the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs. Meanwhile, Attorney General Walker is getting flack from the St. Thomas St. John Chamber of Commerce. That's after some businesses received notice that they owed significant amounts in unpaid unemployment insurance contributions, and yet these businesses claimed they do not owe any money. Chamber of Commerce Board President Sebastiano paiwanski Casanelli said the position of the Attorney General to universally assume everyone is guilty ignores recognized standards of procedure. Casanelli also stated that debts going back to the 1980s may not be lawfully collected. He also stated that if a former Commissioner of Labor is correct, the vast majority of the legally collectible debt is owed by the government itself. According to the Chamber of Commerce, while they support the Department of Labor's efforts to collect outstanding debts, such collection efforts must be done within bounds of law. The Juan F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center is pleased to announce that the American College of Radiology, or the ACR, certified the Juan F. Louis Mammography Imaging Service. The hospital's mammography unit is LORAD's 2015 Selenia Dimensions, that Medimax installed in early September 2015. It was provisionally endorsed by the ACR to permit its users to seek full accreditation. Now it is fully accredited for screening, diagnostic, and interventional use from May 17, 2016 through August 16, 2019. The Committee on Mammography Accreditation of the Commission on Quality and Safety surveyed the Juan F. Louis Diagnostic Imaging Department. The imaging team underwent an intensive process that started last October. ACR accreditation is the gold standard in medical imaging. Last week, more than $9.9 .9 million was paid out in 2015 tax refunds and another $10 million in refunds are ready to be processed for payment, according to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Additionally, employees from 10 government agencies are receiving raises this week that will amount to annual salary increases averaging just under $5,000. Most of these workers will also be receiving a significant lump sum in their June paychecks as Governor Kenneth Mapp authorized all raises retroactive to January 1st of this year. 
The Rules and Judiciary Committee met in Otley Legislative Hall to consider the nominations of Renee Gums Carty to the VI Superior Court bench. Chaired by Senator Kenneth Gittins, her nomination was approved to serve as a judge for the Superior Court of the Virgin Islands. Gums Carty's nomination was unanimously approved with a vote of 78. In her testimony, Gums Carty shared the traits that she said best qualified her for the role. The committee also moved on the nominations of Vince Danette to the Virgin Islands Port Authority and Terry Griffiths to the Megan's Bay Authority. Danette's nomination, previously vetted on February 11th, was held in committee. Griffiths' nomination, previously vetted on March 29th, was approved with a, vo a vote of five yes, two no. At press time, legislators re were listening to testimony, testimony rather, relative to Bill Number 31-0255, an act relating to the reorganization of the judicial system. Call on News 2 to keep you updated. In other news, St. Croix Central High School remained closed today, Thursday, May 26th, and also will be closed on Friday, May 27th, due to an equipment failure that has affected electricity in major portions of the school. Students were released at 1 p.m. on Wednesday, May 25th, as we reported, when a transformer at the school blew out. An appropriate replacement has been ordered from off-island and is being shipped to the school. Now, just a reminder, all Virgin Islands public schools will be closed on Monday, May 30th, in observance of the Memorial Day holiday. Turn our attention overseas. A House committee voted to create a federal oversight board to address Puerto Rico's $70 billion debt crisis, a long-delayed measure that Congress may not complete before the July 1st deadline for a $2 billion payment to investors. The bill, approved Wednesday, with minor changes on a 29 to 10 committee vote, won't be acted on by the full House until sometime after Congress's week-long Memorial Day recess next week. It still faces potential obstacles in the House and needs to be approved by the Senate. Some lawmakers in both parties have said they remain skeptical about the plan. Now, Virgin Islands Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, in response to H.R. 5278, the Puerto Rico Oversight, Management and Economic Stability Act, passed the House Committee on Natural Resources. She said while she is disappointed, the legislation will be moving forward with the proposed oversight board for the VI and other U.S. territories. She is pleased that the chairman, Rob Bishop, of the Natural Resources Committee, made a commitment to working on language regarding the other territories. She thanked the support of Governor Mapp and colleague Representative Tom MacArthur of New Jersey for offering an amendment which would have restored the bill to its original intent for a Puerto Rico Oversight Board and essentially uphold the financial autonomy of the VI and other U.S. territories, something that will allow for us, she said, to continue in the bond market without changes to investor risk assessment. We're heading into the weekend, and he's been the presumptive Republican nominee for weeks now. But today, Donald Trump officially crossed the 1,237 delegate threshold, clinching the GOP presidential nomination. Diane Gallagher has the latest on the race for the White House. Just a few weeks shy of his campaign's one-year anniversary, Donald Trump is marking a major milestone. Look, if I didn't win by massive majorities, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today. The billionaire is now officially the Republican Party's presumptive nominee, clinching support of the required 1,237 delegates Thursday, when some previously uncommitted, unbound delegates made it clear they are now on Team Trump. The last man standing out of an originally massive 17-person Republican field celebrated at a campaign stop in North Dakota today. The folks behind me got us right over the top. His focus now squarely on the Democrats and November. Believe me, I will beat Hillary. It's the unofficial end to what has been an unconventional and often ugly primary campaign from the first-time politician, filled with nasty nicknames. Crooked Hillary. Lion Ted. Little Marco. Raucous rallies. Right, get him out of here. Get him out. And controversial comments. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And while Trump has the delegates to secure the nomination, that still doesn't mean everyone in the party is on board. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan still seems hesitant to endorse. What I'm most concerned about is making sure that we actually have real party unity, not pretend party unity. Real party unity because we need to win this election in the fall. Trump will continue to be called the presumptive nominee until Republicans officially cast their ballots at the convention in July. In Washington, Diane Gallagher.
And keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers there, we can see the Dow down 23, NASDAQ up 6, S&P 500 also down. Coming up on News 2, a video posted on social media, you may have seen it, by a former student of Charlotte Mali High School who incidentally graduated with honors. It's going viral and it's casting the school in not so positive light. Details coming up. Welcome back. A video posted on social media by a former student of Charlotte Mali High School who incidentally graduated with honors is going viral and it's casting the school in not so positive light. CAHS graduate Alvin alleges that his offer to give back was turned down and in a harsh way by no less than an assistant principal of the school. News News April Night has more. Alvin Burroughs of Charlotte Amali High School, class of 2006, took to Facebook in anger and frustration. He said he merely asked for a chance to give back by speaking to students when he was told this by assistant principal Irma Skelton. They call me Skelton and they transform me to a line and she gonna tell me, Anybody who graduate and we have in our 10 year reunion, we have accomplished nothing. We spoke to Burroughs, who's National Guard in Tampa Bay, a professional trainer and a t-shirt business owner. He said he is qualified to speak to VI students. Oh yes, because the same gunshots they're running from, I was running from those same gunshots like when I was playing basketball in the West Side, when I was playing basketball in other neighborhoods. Like I was doing that too. They know, like, when I'm talking to them, I would say, like, I was you. News 2 does not have confirmation that Skelton indeed said what Burroughs alleges against her. Burroughs' video, however, has gotten over 93,000 views on Facebook. Majority of commenters supported him, but some said the threat he made against Skelton in the video somewhat undermined his character. Any place I see Miss Skelton, like, any place I see Miss Skelton and this woman tell me anything, I could consider, hey, I could come visit mm -hmm. me behind bars. I could come visit me behind bars. I started talking calmly. I was like, nah, if I do it that way, they're not going to see my passion. Official statement from the Department of Education was brief. They said they welcome past graduates who want to speak to current students and that they did reach out to Burroughs. Commissioner McCollum and Superintendent Wells Hendrington did meet with Mr. Burroughs via conference call. And I can say that the conversation was a very positive one. Education statement did not address whether Burroughs is now indeed scheduled to speak with students like he originally requested. It also did not address any disciplinary measures, if any, on Skelton. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Burr stressed that he posted the video and did not tag anyone because he was not seeking attention for himself, but for the issue. If there are any developments on this, we will certainly keep you updated. Don John H. Woodson, junior high, seventh grader, Michaela Todman, represented the VI very well in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in National Harbor, Maryland. She did not score high enough to continue on today, and that picture was yesterday. The event was broadcasted live online by ESPN3. 45 children advanced, will advance to the final rounds. It comes after a day of tongue twisters that will stump most adults and did stump most of the 284 original spellers. Organizers made the competition harder this year to avoid the kind of long, late showdown that occurred last year. The students range in age from 6 to 14, with about the same number of boys and girls. The winners will get prizes, a trophy, and $40,000 in a primetime ESPN broadcast on Thursday. United States Virgin Islands Department of Tourism produced a customer service and professionals panel um, today, Thursday, May 26, featuring leading Virgin Islands professionals from the territory and the U.S. mainland at Frenchman's Reef. It featured customer service expert Lisa Wynn Magnuson, Dr. Brian Williams, owner of BW Enterprise, Yvette Thomas Henry, general manager of the Four Seasons in Atlanta, Sherwin Robinson, general manager of the 4040 Club in New York, and Yolandita Jackson James, founder of Lala Speaks. 
The next one will be held at the VI Cardiac Center at the Wamalui Hospital in St. Croix on Friday. The all-day sessions are tailored for the public, taxi and tour operators, students, managers, and supervisors. Pleasant Healthcare and the St. Croix Chamber of Commerce will be holding a grand opening celebration and ribbon cutting ceremony. Stacy Plaskett will be the honorary guest uh, speaker. Pleasant Healthcare provides access to affordable eye surgeries such as cataract and glaucoma procedures in a new state-of-the-art facility that is fully AAAHC and CMS certified. It includes an optical retail shop. Well, for those who need it, the Government Employees Retirement System invites its members who have two to three years before they retire to participate in a countdown to retirement workshop. That's on Wednesday, June 8th at the GERS Complex second floor training room in Comprince and Scotta here in St. Thomas from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Workshop topics will include GERS benefits, Medicare, health insurance coverage, energy saving tips, and more. For additional information, or to pre-register, you can call 776-7703, extension 4202, or 4200. Pre-registration deadline is Friday, June 3rd. Well, the American Legion District No. 10 will do its part to honor our veterans. District Commander Charles David announced that the district has several events planned for Memorial Day. In addition to the Memorial Day parade, post members will plan to place flags on all veterans' graves in the cemeteries. Legionnaires will also attend church services at selected churches, and a pre-Memorial Day service will be held at the Kings Hill Cemetery on Sunday, May 29th. Now, the event on Memorial Day on St. Croix will begin at 9.30 a.m. at the Basin Triangle, where a parade will start and move on to the Christiansted Cemetery for a graveside service. The parade will then continue on to the Christiansted waterfront. Then a special honor ceremony will take place at the Christiansted bandstand. Command Chief Warrant Officer uh, Augustine Webster will be the keynote speaker. The St. Thomas Parade begins at 9.30 from the Western Cemetery. Then we'll move on to the Emil White Memorial for the seaside ceremony. They will then move to Veterans Park. Staff Sergeant uh, Ray Rouse is the Ray Rouse is the keynote speaker. Now on St. John, a Memorial Day service is conducted at the Frank Powell Senior Park in Cruz Bay. Guest speaker for that ceremony is Ms. Geneva Paris. Now the VIPD has some parking restrictions in effect for the Memorial Day events on St. Thomas and St. Croix. Here's what you need to know. Parking restrictions effective Monday, May 30, 2016 from 5 a.m. until the completion of the event. The following parking restrictions will be in effect. No parking on King Street from Bassing Triangle to the Wharf area. No parking on Market Company Street towards the cemetery. In St. Thomas, no parking will be allowed on Main Street from 8 a.m. until the parade passes Norregata Road. From Zora Traffic Light to Natural Liberty will be closed off during the ceremony at the Roosevelt Park. Any vehicle found parked in the restricted areas will be ticketed and or towed at owner's expense. And just a quick note, there will be a changing programming this week due to the Memorial Day recognition. News 2 will be preempted by a special on Monday, May 30th. Be sure to tune in on Tuesday, however, May 31st, for our regular scheduled programming. We will have highlights from the VI Memorial Day parades on Tuesday's newscast. Be sure to stick around. Your News 2 AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Thursday evening and thank you so much for joining me. I'm Larissa Abreu here with a look at your Virgin Island forecast. It's been very nice across the Virgin Islands over the last few days, but we are looking at major change on the way starting on Saturday. And here is why. We've been looking at an area of low pressure that has developed between the islands of the Bahamas and the island of Bermuda. Here it is. You can see it clearly on satellite. It's beginning to have a very nice rotation to it. While
while this system has a 50% chance of becoming our next subtropical or tropical development. And what that simply means is that it's going to pull lots of tropical moisture and some of that moisture can park itself right over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And there's another scenario where most of the moisture stays off towards the west. So it's pretty much you have to keep yourself very locked and tuned to what's going on in the weather because we have possible uh, dangerous scenario shaping up here over the next few days. We can see heavy flooding downpours, several inches expected, and that can definitely cause flooding and lots of headaches. So you definitely want to prepare in advance. Meanwhile, for tonight, conditions won't be too bad out there. We're keeping things relatively quiet, partly cloudy skies, very mild, the potential for a passing sprinkle due to those easterly trade winds. Across the area tomorrow, we're still going to deal with a very similar weather pattern. Partial sunshine in St. John, temperature of 88 expected, with the possibility of a shower or two throughout the day. As we head towards St. Thomas, your high 88 with a blend of sun and clouds and the possibility of a sprinkle in the area. Same deal across St. Croix. Temperatures there well into the 80s. Anyone doing any boating, we don't have any advisories out. Waves are between 3 and 5 feet in the Atlantic and winds are out of the east between 10 and 15 knots. We're looking at similar conditions across the Caribbean waters. So conditions looking okay at least for tonight and even into the day on Friday. But take a look at the next few days over the island. As I mentioned, lots of models are hinting that most of the action stays over the Virgin Islands and with all of that moisture that's going to lead to showers and heavy thunderstorms around. So once again, people, it's very, uh, it's, it's important to exercise caution and just keep a watchful eye to the sky in case we do see the heavy rain that can lead to flooding across the area. Sandy? Thank you for that. Time for our news to weather picture there by Janaya Letzum, fourth grader representing the Wesley Methodist 21st Century After School Beautiful picture there. Janiya is looking forward as we get closer to the weekend to head outdoors and enjoy the awesome weather we can expect with some sunshine and blue skies. Janiya, I hope you had a wonderful week. Send us your News 2 weather picture to be featured right here on News 2. To the address right there on the screen, CBS News 2, Innovative Business Center, 4611, 22 Park Street, 300, St. Thomas VI, 00802. Be sure to include your name, age, school, uh, dress uh, and a little brief description of your work of art and tune in to see it right here on News 2. That's all for now. We'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm Sandra Gumansing. Have a wonderful evening.